I wanted to show you some illustrations of loads and stresses on objects. So I've got this stick here, which uh, dem you can demonstrate a lot of things very simply with the stick. And again, I, we talked about five loads that we most frequently encounter, which would be tension, which would be the pulling of the stick, compression would be the pushing of the stick, um, well, flexure is the bending of the stick, torsion is the twisting of the stick, and shear is the trying, be trying to slide the stick. So, and um, those are the five typical loads that you, you can apply. Impact would be punching the stick, and um, uh, fatigue would be cycling this thing a bunch of times. It's causing fatigue strength. Uh, stress concentration would be, would be me cutting a notch into this stick and uh, causing it to weaken as a result of that. I'll have a hard time corroding the stick, but uh, those are all things that uh, come into play. And the other uh, terminology you can look at in, in sort of experimenting with this little stick is the moment of inertia, which I'd sort of uh, pointed to anyway before. Namely, an object has more rigidity and more strength in certain axes than another. So if you can see this beam is skinny in this axis and wide in this axis, which means if I push down on this, it will be very uh, pushed down this way it will be very strong. I can't bend it. Whereas if I turn it this way, it's easy to bend. Okay, the same moment, in other words, the force here and the distance here are the same, but the amount of bend is much less. So, in fact, I can even you know, break the thing like so pretty easily. Whereas if I try to do the same thing this way, I, I couldn't even come close. So you can see it by just changing the orientation of the material, I can get a lot more strength. And that's really good if you can predict the load of something. So if you're designing a bookshelf, that's fine. If you're designing a stick shift, that's not so fine because you don't know where all the loads will come from. And also you can see torsionally, the twisting action, this is not very good. And I can pretty much twist it pretty easily too. And uh, that's a good example of how shape affects strength. And one of my favorite uh, models for indicating all these things is a branch, it's a stick. And what you see here, just in what nature has given us, is how you get these fillets at the branches that reduce stress concentration. You get a decrease in the size of the, the branch, the further away from the trunk or the branch uh, from, from this, the point of the origin. Because as the, uh, as the moment increases, the further I am from this point to this point, the higher the stresses. So the stresses are higher here than they are here. So if a bird lands on this thing, there's not much of the load here, but it gets higher and higher as the moment arm increases. So this tapers as it gets further out. So that's showing you uh, uh, the effect of moment arm and so on. And the cross section is round because you get wind load that pushes the, the branches up. You get birds and snow that push the branches down. Um, as far as buckling, uh, trees and branches don't get big enough, tall enough, and skinny enough to buckle. So even though I could buckle this if I uh, pushed on it hard enough, uh, you don't see trees that spontaneously buckle normally. Um, so those are good examples of features built into even a tree. So it's a good mind model to tap into because again you're seeing a reduction in stress concentration by having fillets where the branches connect. You see that the decrease in material the further away you get from where it joins because the stresses are lower the, the further out you get on the branch. Uh, you see uh, that it doesn't buckle. You even see um, uh, impact. For example, this, this, has, this has give. So when something impacts it, when uh, hail strikes it or something like that, there's some flex here that absorbs the energy and reduces the, that local uh, point of uh, stress from an impact. 